In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to train Flux LoRa on photos of yourself or a person or an actual product like this little cup right here. I've already trained a couple of LoRa's. Let me show you an example of what you can do when you do when you do train one. You need about 10 to 20 photos of the subject itself upload it into fall and I'll show you how to do all this in a second but then you can prompt it with the trigger word in this instance it's Nico myself so let's let's prompt it to say a photo of Nico playing on his phone and here I am a photo of myself with my rings and everything on the couch playing on my phone not only can you train it on subjects on people but you can train it on products let me show you what I mean as well I've trained this on photos of a van in this instance the keyword for the van is Kawaska that's the brand name of the van that we've trained this Laura on and we're going to have uh, a photo of Kawaska in the middle of the Patagonia So with a simple prompt, like a photo of Kawaska, the white van with the logo Kawaska on the side, parked by a large national park somewhere in the Chilean Patagonia, we can see the sunset in the background. It helps to re-prompt it and remind it of what it is that it's trained on. I find that the best solution when it's trained on actual products. And now we see the side of the van, which is actually perfect, spot on. That's what the van looks like in real life. Now, we're going to do this in full AI. The reason why we are doing this with full is because it takes a lot of processing power to be able to train this, and I don't have this in my MacBook. So we're actually we're actually kind of borrowing the processing power from full AI. All in all, it's going to cost you about $5 to train this model, and then a couple of cents every time you call it to regenerate an image. If you don't know how to make an account on Fall or everything, I've done it in a couple of previous videos. I'll leave those this I'll leave those in the description below of where you can access them. I'm going to assume that you already have set up this your account on Fall plus a couple of credits as I've already gone through this in previous videos. And if you don't know me, my name's Nico. I'm an AI powered SEO specialist and I also run a free community, the AI Ranking Hub, where we teach people how to use all of these AI tools specifically for marketing, for SEO and for automations. So you become very, very efficient with all of these tools. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thing that you need to do is take a couple of images of the product. For this instance, like I said, we're going to use it training, training it on this little cup. Now, I've taken the image, a lot of images of the cup on my phone, and you can see they're not the highest quality, but they're okay. We're going to use that as it is. But we need to do a couple of things to get this ready, the photos, I mean. So when you go to full slash models, there's going to be a thing here that says Flux is here. Train a Flux LoRa. That's what we want to do. We're going to do the advanced training. And we need to pick a zip file which is the files with all the images inside it. But before we do that, if we hover on the eye next to the image data URL, it tells us a very, very important message, which, which tells us how we need to prepare the zip files and the images before we upload them. So it says here, <clears throat> URL to zip files. Uh, so in addition to the images, the archive can contain text files with captions. Each text file should have the same name as the image file it corresponds to. The captions can include a special string, trigger. If a trigger word is specified, it will replace trigger in the captions. So I've done this a couple of ways and you can create another set of text files all with the same image having the trigger word that will correspond to our subject. I find though that it's quite all right just to place the trigger word itself. So for example, in this instance, we're going to do a photo of green cup. And the green cup is going to be our trigger word in this instance, and I'm just gonna add a one here. Then I'm going to do the same, adding it, adding the corresponding number to all the images, but the same caption is going to be a photo of trigger word, in this instance, green cup, and the next number to go along with it. Now I've named all my images appropriately. I'm going to click them all and just compress them right in that same folder. Now I've got the archive folder, that's all I need. I'm going to pick the file here, and find it on my desktop and upload the zip file. Now, the most important thing that you need to do is place the trigger word in the section that says trigger word. 
for us, it's going to be green cup. And if we click down on the more additional settings, you don't need to change anything. You can experiment with this if you want to when you are training this, but I haven't just because to be honest, I don't really know what all of the parameters mean and how it's going to change it. And I've had pretty good success just leaving everything as it is. Now, the last thing you're gonna do is press start. And if you've done everything correctly and you've got credits on your API key, you're gonna see this in progress, training history in progress, see logs. This is going to take a couple of minutes. Usually it takes anywhere between 10 to half an hour, depending on how many images, the quality of the images and the rest. So I'm gonna come back when this is all done. As the model is training, you'll see how much, which percentage of it is done. At the moment, we're at 51% and it's been going for about 14 minutes. So this can take a little while. You just have to be patient. Now we've finished training our LoRa with our green cup. We're going to run interface. That is the latest training LoRa. So I know that it's this one. And when I click on it, it says a portrait of our green cup. I'm going to leave it as it is and hit run and see what happens. Hopefully it understands what we're trying to do here and we generate an image of our green little cup. Obviously that didn't work whatsoever. That's not the green cup. So I'm gonna do what I did in the beginning with the van picture and remind it what the green cup is and hopefully this, then hopefully we'll get the image that we want. Now we're getting what we want. That is the green cup that we were after. It's the back end, obviously, and it looks quite similar. If we take a look at our green cup over here, it looks pretty spot on. So, so now let's try and make the prompt a little bit more advanced. And we actually have a pre-trained GPT, which I'll leave linked in the description below, that helps us create better prompts here. So we're going to put a simple prompt here, and then it should really expand that prompt for us, which will then put to our LoRa, and hopefully the output, output will increase. Now I've got a prompt here, I'm going to slightly amend it to fit the requirements that we're after. So the portrait of a green cup, I'm gonna leave that as it is. And I'm gonna copy the rest of the prompt, and just see here the green, metal cup with speckled white flex, perfect. I'm going to remove the explanation of what the cup should look like, but in the background, we should have everything the same. And now we're going to run it again and see what happens this time. We should have a bit more of a interesting background. Cool, perfect. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we've got our product in the middle of a background, which looks really good. So I'm going to um, see if we can get the logo on it as well, but I'm not quite sure as the wordings then makes things a little bit different, but the green cup itself looks exactly like that in the image. Perfect. Okay, now I think with this one, we will get a pretty good result. I'm just going to have here a portrait photo of the green cup, which is our trigger word. And then it says the cup is raised towards the lips of a blonde woman, her wavy hair catching the soft glow of the late afternoon sun. We'll leave everything else as it is so that we ensure we can actually get a photo shoot of our own product. Not too bad at all. Now we're really getting serious here. Um, now I've got my green cup again with the model on the side and the focus of the shot is the cup itself. Now we can play with other things such as the default size of the images. Let's make it a portrait image, for example, and we'll leave, we'll start playing around with the scale and the other parameters here. The scale here indicates how much of the trained LoRa we're actually placing in the image or the trained photos here. So the scale of LoRa weight, this is used to scale the LoRa weight before merging it into the base model. Uh, the guidance is how much you want the image generation app to stick exact word by word to your prompt. And if you actually give it a little bit more room to work with, like 2.5, and we're gonna change the scale of the LoRa to 1.4, let's experiment a little bit with what we have. But already, we've got a couple of images that we can use here. I'm going to download that image, and then we're going to compare the image with the image output of LoRa with the images that I've got on file that I took of the original photo here. Perfect. 
That's pretty spot on now. Uh, it's starting to get the Patagonia logo here. So I'm just going to say here, it's getting that quite good. I'm going to decrease, increase the guidance scale here to two and see what happens. I'm going to download this logo. That's pretty good already. And let's change the size just to make it a portrait, but not as long. And already you can see that just it's all about experimentation and see what we're getting out of this. To be able to keep track of which parameters are really working for you, I've created a Google Sheet that you can input here all of the parameters. So the description of the LoRa that you trained here is the green cup with the logo. You put the prompt here, the image size that you've selected. For example, we've selected the portrait, uh, the inference steps, the guidance, the lower scale, and more important here in the quality, I want you to put the quality from one to 10. For an instance, the image that we just took isn't that good, but we'll leave it at a seven and the notes will say uh, the logo is not quite right. And then for the image link, we can go back to our LoRa and we can get the link by pressing that button here and we can leave everything in our Google Sheet. So then we start generating a little bit of a map of what's working for us and what isn't. Let's try one more time with the parameters changed quite a bit. We're going to go to the guidance scale and we're gonna put that to 10 and we're gonna leave everything else as it is. <laughs> and you see that playing around with the number of steps and the scale, you'll get really varying results. Some of them are really good. Some of them are quite horrifying like this one over here. And that's really to do with the scale of the, uh, the path here. So the default here was one. I'm gonna leave that at 1.4 because I was having pretty good results here. And I'm gonna leave the guidance at, let's just leave it at two and run it one more time and see what we're getting. So for this instance, it kind of tends to work better on humans because there can be a little bit variation on the human itself and that's quite all right, depending on what you wanna use it for. And the products look really, really good if they don't have much writing on the product. Whilst Flux is quite good at creating writing on the images, when we train it with the LoRa like this, it's not the best, but even this image itself is kind of usable. You really have to play around with it and see how you go. Now. We see other parameters here like the API, which means we can actually call this and implement this parameters and this uh, trained LoRa within automations. But before you get to integrating this into any automations with Make, you really need to make sure that you have dialed down exactly which parameters work for you and get a consistently good result every time for you before you place this into automations. Again, some images are really good, some are quite terrifying. It's all about experimentation. And once you get the right format, you make sure that the quality you put 10 out of 10 and you indicate that this parameters and these uh, types of parameters are the ones that work for you. Unfortunately, I can't provide the settings that work best for your LoRa because this will change drastically on the image quality that you give it. If you've taken all the background out of the images before you place it in there, it all varies a lot. It's really quite, it's quite good if you spend the time to see what works. Just keep in mind that we've spent a little bit of credits training this, and we've also spent quite a few credits now trying everything out. For example, this request will cost us 0.035 per megapixel for $1. You can try this, run this model appropriate approximately 29 times. So it's all about experimenting. Like I said before, I'm going to leave this as, maybe let's leave it as two and try one more as one. And the inferences steps, which is the amount of times it needs to go through it before it gives the final image to you. And if you increase the number of inferences steps, it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll increase the quality of the output, for example, like that here. This is probably as close as I've gotten it. The logo is not quite the same, but I'm sure if I play around with it here and up the scale of the LoRa, we can probably get it right. What I've set here is I've taken the human aspect of the image and I've just said to take it um, in a minimalistic kitchen with other kitchen utensils around it. And it seems to get it 
a lot better here. So maybe it's about once we have one component, don't complicate it by adding other parameters such as a human or anything else like that, which makes things a little bit difficult when you're trying to make a photo shoot out of it. But yeah, see, this is pretty much spot on. I like that. Um, but yeah. If you found a lot of value in this video, please hit the subscribe button and give me a little like. And if you want to learn more about how to maximize these tools for your marketing and place all of these in automations and you don't know how to get started, we've created a free community, the AI Ranking Free Community, where there's a classroom section and we've got all of the things you need to really get started. And the community is pretty vibrant at the moment. In two weeks, we've managed to grow to 153 members. So I suggest you join now.